Hello and Namaste everyone, welcome to my channel SigmaX. Today, I will teach you how to solve any physics numerical problems easily. By applying this method, which I am going to teach you, you can solve almost any physics numerical problems. So, our physics solving method comprises two simple steps. Step number one, what is the subject and your target? And step number two, what equations can you use? You can see that these two steps are questions all starting with what. So you can remember this way with the name TWO method. Now let's go through these steps and solve a problem side by side. In step number one, we are asked to find what the subject and target is. In other words, what do we understand from the given question and what are we expected to find? For that, first of all, don't panic, be calm. It's just a problem, not the end of the world. I've seen a lot of students got panicked before reading the question. Is that going to help? Obviously no. So be sure to come down and read the question carefully and only you will get some idea about what the question is asking. If the question is long, then read and understand it in parts till you get even a slight understanding of what is going on. After reading through the problem at least once, list down anything that is given to you under a category labeled known and anything that is asked to find under a category labeled unknown. And if possible, draw a diagram. It cannot be emphasized enough how much easier a problem will be once it is drawn out. Once you are done with this, try to bring this drawing into motion like in this animation in your brain. This will actually give you a clear understanding of what is happening in the problem. Now, let's apply step number one to this problem. As I have said earlier, we are going to be calm and read through the question carefully. A jet plane lands with a velocity of 100 meters per second and can accelerate at a maximum rate of minus 5.0 meters per second square as it comes to rest. Number A. From the instant it touches the runway, what is the minimum time needed before it stops? And number B. Can this plane lands at a small airport where the runway is 0.80 km long? Have you understand the problem? If not, then read it again, but this time more carefully and a bit slowly. If yes, then you start listing the knowns and unknowns. Here, in this problem, it is clearly said that a jet plane lands with a velocity of 100 meters per second. That means its initial velocity, which is represented by u, equals to 100 meters per second. How can we know that it is an initial velocity? If you have read the question carefully, then you should have noticed a line from the instant it touches the runway. That is, this question asks us to solve this problem from the instant the jet plane touches the runway, not from the time when it was flying in the air, which actually makes 100 meters per second an initial velocity. Now, let's read further and list other information. The jet plane can accelerate at a maximum rate of minus 5.0 meters per second as it comes to rest. That means its acceleration as soon as it touches the runway equals minus 5.0 meters per second square. Here, the minus sign in the acceleration indicates that the sense of the acceleration is opposite that of the motion, that is, the plane is decelerating. Also, the question clearly says that it comes to rest at last. Obviously, it will come to rest if the acceleration does have the value of minus 5.0 meters per second square. Hence, its final velocity, which is represented by v, equals to 0 meter per second. Again, let's read the question further. Number A. From the instant it touches the runway, what is the minimum time needed before it stops? So here, we are asked to find the time t needed for the jet plane to stop. Since we are expected to find the time in which the velocity changes from u equals to 100 meters per second to v equals to 0 meter per second, we are listing down the time in category labeled unknown. Number B. Can this plane land at a small airport where the runway is 0.80 km long? So here, we are asked to find whether this jet plane can successfully land at an airport whose runway is 0.80 km long. For this, we should first find the shortest distance it will cover before stopping and compare it with the given distance. That means, in number B, we are actually asked to find the shortest distance the plane travels to come to rest. Therefore, list down the shortest distance in the category labeled unknown. So here, we have finished with listing our knowns and unknowns. 
Now, let's draw a diagram to visualize what is going on in this problem. Here, the jet plane lands at point A on the runway with an initial velocity of 100 meters per second and moves forward by applying the acceleration of minus 5.0 meters per second square which is actually decelerating it. And finally, it comes to rest at point B making its final velocity 0 meter per second. So the distance AV it covers before it stops is the shortest distance S and the time T it takes is the minimum time. Isn't it easy to understand after listing the knowns and unknowns and drawing the diagram? I think it is. Now let's move to our second step. In step number 2, we will find the equations which are applicable in solving this problem and find our answer by applying them. For that, think of those equations which includes the quantities you know and also the one you are looking for. From these equations, pick the right ones and apply it to find your answer. For example, if you have the mass of an object and a force and you are trying to find the acceleration, then you can think of this formula of acceleration. A equals to V minus U divided by T and F equals to MA. From these two, you can easily sort out F equals to MA is the right one. Therefore, go with F equals to MA and find the acceleration. Similarly, let's think of the equations that might be applicable in solving our problem. If we observe our knowns and unknowns, then we can easily say that the probable equations are V equals to U plus AT, S equals to UT plus half AT squared and V squared equals to U squared plus 2AS. Now, from these equations, let's pick the right ones. In question number A, we are asked to find time t and for that we are given initial velocity, final velocity and acceleration. That means v equals to u plus at is the right formula to use in equation number A. Applying the values of initial velocity, final velocity and acceleration we get time t equals to 20 seconds. Similarly, in question number B, we are asked to find the shortest distance traveled by the jet plane and compare it with the given distance 0.80 km. For that, we are given the values of initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration and also time. Remember, if the case does not change in question, then you can use your previous answer as a known value. If we look at these remaining two equations, then we can say that any of these two equations can be used. So, in such case, just pick one which will be comparatively easier to execute. Here, I am choosing V square equals to U square plus 2AS. Applying the values of initial velocity, final velocity and acceleration, we get distance S equals to 1000 meters or 1 kilometer. Now, if we compare the required distance that is 1 kilometer with the given distance of runway that is 0.80 kilometer, we find required distance is greater than the distance of runway. That means this landing will be unsuccessful or in other words, this plane cannot land at this small airport. Bonus trick. Hack the units and check your answer. Remember the units of the quantity you are trying to find. If this unit matches the unit in your answer, then your answer is right most of the time. Also, I suggest you to use base units instead of compound units. For example, use kg meter per second square instead of Newton. And if you have time, then put a box or underline your answer to make your work neat. Finally, we have come to the end of this video. I hope from now on, all of you can easily solve any numerical problems using TWO method. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get notification when I upload a new video. I will see you guys in my next video. Till then, bye bye.